Okay, welcome back. Uh, so we are just getting familiar with our studio. If you haven't used it before, this is um, our first time using our studio this semester since we've been using Google Colab up to now. So when we started looking at um, these videos, we were looking at a static HTML document that I generated from this Quarto document that I'm working with in our studio. So using this file in the background. So right now I can edit this file. I can insert code cells. We just talked about that. I can run code cells. I can delete code cells. Um, I can install and manage my um, packages. But how do I? How did I create this HTML document from this file over here? So it's nice to take the work that I'm doing in our studio and export it to a different file type, a more universal file type that somebody who does not know our studio or doesn't code in R, if they just want to read the work that I'm doing but not interact with it, then um, we could export the uh, Quarto document to a static file type like HTML I can export this to a PDF file. I can export this to a Word document. And I can even export this file to an interactive Jupyter notebook that I can then in, open up in Colab. So that's another super nice thing about working in our studio that we weren't necessarily able to do with Colab. In Colab, you work with a Jupyter notebook and you really can't export that to another file type. You can do like a, a print to PDF file, um, but you it's really not easy to export a Jupyter notebook to other file types in Colab. In, in other software you can, but if you're working in Colab, you're pretty much just stuck working with that, that Jupyter notebook. Um, when you're working in RStudio with this Quarto document, I can render this to other file types. So there's a render button over here that I can use to um, export this to an HTML file or a PDF file. Uh, so what I can do right now is this file is set up where if I hit the render button, it's going to export this information to an HTML file. And that's the default that I'm going to use, and that's the type of file that I would like you to create um, from your work. We're going to work with HTML files because those are the most universal. They'll work uh, with people that are using different operating systems. Um, HTML, HTML files will convert um, math symbols nicely. It will handle images nicely. We need to be a little bit more careful with working with PDF files. Things don't work as nicely, though the the, the format of a PDF file is nice in the end. Um, creating a PDF file from a Quarto document that has some LaTeX in it and possibly some images in it can be problematic. It's not an issue with HTML. So if I want to create an HTML file of my own from this, I just click the render button. But I want to just point out way up at the top of this document, there's some stuff before we get into the text of the document. And this header is really what controls like what we call the front matter. Um, meaning like if you were to publish this, the first page of it would just be like, hey, this is the title of the article. This is the author of the article. Um, this stuff over here, you'll you'll never have to edit one of these headers. So I will format these for you. But if you're curious, this is just saying that when you click the render button, what is the format that's going to be created? We're going to create an HTML document that has a table of contents um, that is located on the left. Um, the table of contents is only going to expand to the first level. 
And when I click on the first level, it's only going to give me the depth of two levels. And this is just referring to the headers that I use um, when I create the markdown text. Um, so in any case, this stuff is all just kind of some metadata that is instructing the document what to do when I click the render button. So when I click the render button, it's going to create a document like this. And again, that stuff that you were just looking at was just saying here, I want to include a table of contents. I want to put it on the left side and I want people to have access to the raw code that was used to generate these files. So that's what this code link was. This was the link that took you to all of the project files in Posit Cloud. So that information I was all able to encode with um, this part of the header. This is called a YAML. This is just saying by default, when I open this file, it's gonna display it in visual mode as opposed to source mode. Um, so if I entered source here, the default would be to open it up in source mode. This is just saying that any time I run a code cell that gives a warning, um, like we did um, over here, when you run the dplyr command for the first time, there was some warning messages that appeared. They don't appear right now. Um, this just means when it creates the HTML document, any warning messages from code cells are not gonna be displayed since it's not really useful. Um, and this is just saying that this is the license for these materials is that these are um, what are called a Creative Commons license so that other people are welcome to use these materials um, as long as they don't go ahead and charge people for these materials. Um, so at the top, there's a bunch of information. I guess the shorter story is there's a bunch of information up here that you really shouldn't edit and you don't need to edit. But this just tells um, the software what to do when I click the render button. So now finally, when I've got my document finished, off in the end and it's all done and I want to create uh, export this to let's say an HTML document this is really a fancy way of saying export to HTML I just click the render button you can see that some stuff is happening in the console down below and out comes a HTML document that was just created so now Here's the HTML document that I just created, and this should have um, the fixing of Posit, right? That now has managing Posit Cloud documents. And this was the uh, original version that is being shared online. I will fix this typo in the online version, um, but there's a difference. This is the online version that we all started looking at this window that just opened up, this is the HTML document that you just created. And I can see that document uh, is created down below over here. So I can see this HTML document has now appeared in my workspace. There are some other files that are needed to create this HTML document and those were created in a separate folder. So if I want to view the document that I just created, it opens up over here by default. And now uh, if I edit this, and now I want to create a new HTML document from my edited version, I just hit render again. This did a bunch of stuff. It looks like nothing changed. But when I come over here, that did get updated in um, the HTML document that I had opened in my browser. And so if I want to delete that, I would just delete it, click the render button. It's going to render this document. 
And now that hello is gone. So I edit this file over here. You can come up with your own workflow, but each time you want to update the HTML document with your changes, you would need to click the render button and then you can click the uh, tab on your browser to make sure those changes were applied to your HTML document. So this process of creating, exporting this Quarto document to other file types is what is called rendering the document. Let me open this up um, on the HTML version where it's a little nicer to read. So the HTML version of our of our work is going to be the nicest version like to read for a viewer. Um, certainly nicer to look at this than it is in this smaller window over here. So maybe this is like the downside of our studio is that it's a little bit clunkier to go from the editable version to a nice viewable version uh, online. That's way easier in Colab. Um, you are working with an HTML document and then you just double click aspects of it and you can edit it. That's not the case with RStudio. I have a separate file in the background that I edit and then I export to HTML and then I can look at that HTML document. So it's almost like I've got two separate documents, the editable version, and then I export it to HTML in Colab, it's really one in the same. And that's maybe one of the advantages of working in Colab um, is th this process of taking your work and creating a viewable HTML page is, is done by default. But we can render to other file types like PDF and um, Word docs as, as well. Um, and there's just a tool in the background that is doing that conversion is called Pandoc, but that is way um, into the weeds that we, we don't need to get into. Um, but you can change to other file formats if you wanted to um, say, render this to a PDF file. But for our purpose this semester in our class, I'm going to just have us um, render to HTML files because those are gonna be the easiest files for you to create. And they're gonna be the easiest files for us all to share when you're submitting your, your homework. Uh, okay, that's great. So in the very last video here, um, no, I'm gonna create two more videos with, with this notebook um, and then we'll get going with Plotly. Okay, thanks.